So with lots of teachers using video now to support uh, online distance, blended, flipped learning, etc., cetera, um, and using your iPad in order to do that, one thing that can really, really support learners is the use of the virtual pointer on the screen to be able to show exactly what it is you're, you're pointing at for the students to be able to see. So screen recording on the iPad along with the pointer function is a really useful tool. Now, this can be done in various different ways. I'm just gonna go through a couple of the different options. Um, if I go into settings, the first one to highlight is that you can connect any Bluetooth uh, uh, mouse or trackpad to your device. I've connected my Magic Mouse um, here. You can see it's connected and that's how I'm controlling this on the screen at the moment. You can also obviously use the, the Magic Keyboard that Apple's brought out or some of the, uh, the Logitech have brought out one that you can also use as well which again gives you different access to being able to have that pointer on your screen so that you can move that around and direct student, uh, students or teachers or whoever it is to what you're doing with that uh, with that pointer at the time. So when I'm explaining to you that I click on uh, home screen here, you can see that my mouse is pointed to home screen. So it's a really, really useful accessibility feature, um, really, really useful for doing screen recordings to show people what you're doing. Now, once you've connected, whether it be by the mouse or be by the trackpad or however you're connecting those things, what you then want to do is have a look at some of the other features that you can do. In general here, you'll notice that on the uh, panel, you also then have the ability to change some of the settings for the trackpad or mouse, depending on what you're using. And in here, you can change the scrolling speed, very similar to what you would do if you're on a Mac computer, um, looking at the, the speed that the mouse um, responds to you moving around. You can have it as natural scrolling, um, or you can have it um, to be the, the kind of movement of your fingers. Um, I tend to leave it the, the traditional way I guess um, and then you can choose if you've got the trackpad to have it to click um, if you tap on it and then what does the two finger click do so again you, you really are creating the trackpad to have the same functions as you would be used to using maybe if you use a mouse the other thing though that possibly is a little bit more useful from an accessibility point of view is you'll notice on my screen at the moment I have the blue outline that's actually in an accessibility feature so if you tap on accessibility um, and scroll down, you'll see that you have access here to a pointer control option. And in pointer control, you can change some of the appearance of this. So, you know, again, you know, you might just want it to be a red pointer because it's it's nicer to have a red pointer. But when we actually think about this from the point of view of users, you know, having it bigger on the screen with that dot in the middle, really fine points where you're pointing to. But might be quite intrusive so you, again you can think about how big do you want the pointer on the screen what color do you want do you want it to automatically hide so if i stop moving the pointer for a while you'll see that it will disappear from the screen so it doesn't get in the way of of the view that people are, are looking at so it doesn't cloud anything um, but the second i move it again it's going to appear you can change the contrast so all of the accessibility features that we're used to using really really useful the pointer animations, this is something that's really good. Initially, um, if I didn't have the mouse attached or trackpad, I used to do this by uh, using, and, and this isn't my invention, by the way, people have shown me this before, by using the assistive touch feature. If you turn this on, you get the little icon here that you can move around, but it doesn't interact with anything on the page. So people were using this to sort of replicate the, replicate the mouse pointer function, but it doesn't interact with anything on the page. If I show you that same thing with the mouse, you'll see that the mouse pointer changes its animation to show that there is a button there that I can click on. So that does completely change how you interact with things, even to the point of view, if I go to the apps on the home screen, the app that I'm uh, hovering over just animates a little bit. So it just kind of zooms into focus a little bit, looks like it's hovering off of the screen. So you know which one you're, you're connecting on. If I do that with the accessibility assistive touch, Yes, you can see that I'm pointing at the, the thing, but then I'm also you know, covering the object so you can't necessarily see what the icon looks like clearly underneath. So again, just a couple of different ways that you can do those things. If I just jump back into those accessibility features for the, um, for the pointer again, just a couple of other things. You can set it to be able to track uh, you know, to double tap to drag across objects, which can be quite useful. And again, another way to access your scrolling speed. So how quickly do you want it to react to things? So again, really, really useful tool. Great for doing video recordings to be able to show people what you're clicking on and at what point, but also 
useful for students to be able to see um, you know how that can benefit them so they know where they're clicking on the screen etc as well so there we go quick use of the pointer using the uh, magic mouse you using the trackpad on the magic keyboard